Okay, this will be an interesting one. Brings back the colour, brings back memories of childhood. Let's see how we go with that. Okay, let's see what this is. It is very timely. It is a puff of, you know, Christmas tinsel. So it's just a puff of tinsel. Uh, I call it a puff. It's like that. But basically, yeah, the colour reminds me of when I was a child. My mum had a couple of uh, household electrical appliances that had this blue, not blue, but this purple tint like her Hoover vacuum cleaner, I remember it was a Hoover, and she had a a a, uh, a hot a set of hot rollers which were in a in a sort of like a circular thing, and you, and you heat them up, you put water in it, and the water boil I think boils and makes them hot, and then she'd use that to set her hair, her curls. So. She, there's a couple of appliances that had that colour in the 70s, especially the clear plastic on the hot rollers and the, I think I think it was just normal plastic for the vacuum cleaner. So yeah, it brings back memories. Those were really nice memories of childhood. Uh, that looks too dark. That is too dark. But basically, yeah, it's really really uh, brings back those sorts of memories of those days. But I know my future is bright and that I don't have to worry about what is going to happen because I've got a bright future and I'll make new memories and the future in my life will keep getting better and better so I can enjoy the memories without feeling a sense of painful nostalgia. I know what it's like to feel painful nostalgia and we now have a, what we've been waiting for, that. But basically we're going to, uh, I think, continue doing this demo and just maybe delay the toner out. Uh, I'm wondering... We're just going to open and close the uh, front door. We can make this toner cartridge go a little bit further and we won't lose the settings. Whereas if we use, if we try, get rid of the toner out indication by changing the toner, all these indicate, all these settings will be lost, which is really silly design by the company that made this, Konica fucking Minolta. I do get very angry at that company frequently. Uh, I do feel a sense of piss, pissed offness about them uh, and a sense of also uh, humorous, humorous derision of this company. I do, I feel very, very... Um, I don't know why I'm doing this now. But basically, yeah, I just feel a sense of, uh, I get angry at them and I also find it amusing that they're a load of shit. They are, folks. They're a load of shit. I'm wondering if we're going to squash this puff to get it closer. We're just going to squash it. But basically, yeah, I just really have no respect for the um, photocopier industry and the status quo of it. The photocopy industry is a real pain in the ass. The man running Konica Minolta, for example, Shoyamana, is a disgrace. 
I have a real hatred towards the way things are in the industry. Uh, that looks interesting, but we've got that there. Um, but basically, I really haven't got any any sense of uh, respect for the industry and the people who preside over it. I don't have any respect. I can't. I don't. I won't. I don't care what they think of me as a person. All I care about is my is that one day I'll be designing superior equipment using that uses artificial intelligence to drive it. And when I build these equipments, they're going to make, be made mainly out of recycled materials as opposed to mined, virgin mined materials. So it has to be out of recycled materials. It has to, these materials are going to be sourced from places like India and China where lots of e-waste gets dumped and is destroying the environment as we speak. It's not what I want. So I'm trying my best to to fucking in the future. And the people that and that the thing is another kicker of this future is the photocopier industry is going to, of the future that my company is going to basically uh, manufacture the equipment on Australian soil. We are not going to source it from overseas. We're not going to go made in China, made in Vietnam or wherever other third world country or any country. It's all going to be made down under. Everything is going to be Australian made, Australian owned and Australian designed. No compromise, folks. Fuck. No compromise. I, re I, re I reject any idea that I'm going to manufacture this anywhere else and that everything's going to be owned, uh, Australian owned, folks. So we've got to fucking pay the workers a little bit more than what they're worth, as in proper wages, not slave wages, proper wages, like the kind of wages you would have got in a typical factory, but better than that. Uh, better than any factory, even from the past, even when Hoover manufactured things on our turf, uh, you know, they would have gotten paid a fairly decent wage compared to made in China. That's why people go overseas for labour, because they're trying to cut corners, they're trying to save money and make a, a huge profit out of slavery, modern-day slavery. Not acceptable, folks. I won't accept that in my in my future. I'm not interested in in working people to the bone. They've got to be happy. They've got to be happy and well fed and well well they've got to be paid the right a proper wage. And basically we don't have that happening very often now. It's always made in China. There's always all this outsourcing. It's fucking stupid. And the fact that the equipment lasts only five years, that's another thing. Our equipment is going to be built to last 60 years. Parts, service and consumables. You know, they're going to last. These equipments are going to last. Not fucking... Uh, now I'm wondering if this is a better one. This looks shit out. But basically we have to fucking think of the future and think of the environment. And that's another thing. I want to be a scientist and find solutions to problems like climate change and um, and uh, nuclear waste or plastic in the ocean. We've got to fucking find solutions to heaps of problems, folks. And most of my money that I earn as a CEO will go towards these things. So I've got a, I've got a bright future ahead for myself. I hoping to get in touch with a loved one called Luigi uh, and basically I look forward to he's going to help make this dream come true because he himself is also a into photocopiers like I am he's also into them so it's important that we share we're on the same page as each other 
and basically yeah um, I'm wondering if we're gonna maybe move it around or if we're gonna just keep it like this so yeah we Luigi and I are basically both interested in revolutionizing and reinvigorating the photocopier industry and making it a, an environmentally and humanitarian friendly industry and hopefully that that will not just be in the industry of building and designing and building photocopiers it'll extend to other people getting the same idea that maybe this is common sense maybe this is what we need we really need not this profiteering money fucking shit that we have now and that things don't last and things are not serviceable things end up on the fucking scrap heap literally and it's really not acceptable what is happening to our environment so you know at the moment I can't do anything not just without Luigi but I'm looking forward to a day when they have brain implants which use quantum computers to drive them to help repair the damage I had at birth because I have I believe I've had brain damage at birth and it's caused me to have problems with learning and other things and basically it's really difficult trying to learn new things and all that I believe the hippocampus and the short-term memory uh, are the most damaged parts and that and there is a future for uh, electronic devices like just like a cochlear implant except it's for your brain although of course it's going to be totally different to a cochlear sure but I'm just using the closest available uh, commercially available prosthesis for a person who's who's deaf so yeah I and also I do believe I have Asperger's syndrome but that's more a benefit than a disability and it helps me give my passion give shape to the passion that I have to design better equipment in the future and now that looks really quite nice I think now we can call this I'm actually wondering if we're going to do a switcheroo or not that's really difficult I'm actually thinking we should do a, a switcheroo or maybe not I just can't work out which corner I'm going to use switcheroo it's really difficult sometimes with my work you know, I get perfectionistic and this is a part of the can the Asperger trait is the perfectionist attitude that I have towards doing things that matter to me I, it is and it's good in the factory or in it's I don't have to I, I know that I'm not going to get perfect when we build this equipment but basically we're going to aim for near perfection and I've decided to to clock it in at lock it in at uh, 97 out of 100 for the new generation of uh, copier system so you can just see I, I it shows in the things I do this and when I don't do a switcheroo and I should have I get angry anyway that looks even better I think now we can call it quits